Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for visiting my channel, and I appreciate you watching this video. If you would take the time before you leave to hit the like button, that helps me out a great deal. If you find that you like the content that you find here, I'd love it if you'd hit the subscribe button, and uh, if you want updates of when new videos are coming out, make sure to ring the bell as well. So, um, today's project is going to be um, what I call a vine ring and it requires four uh, bezels for faceted stones so um, it's one of those ones that I'm a little lazy and I don't always like to make four bezels for a single piece of jewelry but um, every once in a while I'll make one of these because they're kind of pretty and they come out nice uh, so I thought I'd show you guys how to make that one today so stay tuned okay so for this one I picked out uh, four different faceted stones searched through some things to see if we could find some stuff that looked pretty good together. I've got two pear shapes. I've got a little citrine here. Uh, it's kind of a little dark green tourmaline right there. And those are both pear shapes. And then I have a little oval garnet. And then this is a I think they call it a whiskey quartz, but it's a smoky light, kind of a pale smoky quartz. So, so my first step is going to be making bezels for all of these. And I'll probably have you watch me make one, uh, and then I will turn the camera off, make the rest of them, so you don't have to watch me make four things. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. Um, but we'll start with this little, uh, maybe this uh, teardrop shaped tourmaline. And we're going to make a little bezel for it. So, start with some bezel material. This 3 16 inch bezel, um, which I use for a lot of stuff. It's tall enough to where I can put multiple stacks of rings in there to create a step bezel for each of these, which I'm going to do. So probably two or three rings in each one. And then I'll just file down the top of the bezel to meet uh, the height that I need to set the stone. So we'll get started here. When you're doing a bezel for something that has a point like this, you never want to you never want to have the solder joint meet at the point. That's the least effective way to do this. So I'm going to start by making a sharp bend in it. Once you have it the right right size there, I'm going to go ahead and make a little scratch on the outside. And that's where we'll cut that off.
realize now to make some. If I'm just doing ovals or circles, I make little rings, but for this one, I'm going to make kind of teardrop shaped pieces out of 18 gauge round wire. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to grab it like this. teardrop shape. And I can kind of hold it over the top here and see how close I am. So it needs to be a little narrower. kind of so that when I put the two ends together they kind of meet at a point. So I'm going to file the inside of each of these wires. So I can bring the two ends together nicely. I suspect it might, I'm going to be a little bit too big, so I'll have to keep taking little bits off until I get it the right size. That's one of the reasons I'm, not, I'm only going to show you one of these, because it'll take a while to do all of them. Okay, so that one popped in pretty good. I just need to make it uh, probably need to make two in order to make this tall enough. I could do three if I wanted to really lift them up, but I think I'll be okay with probably two. That's pretty good. Get them both in. It's imperative when you solder these in, as if you've seen my other videos. Uh, if you just want a generalized one about making a, a bezel for a faceted stone, uh, you might want to look up there. Um, but when you're, when you're It's imperative when you're soldering these in that these are flush with the bottom and that the top one is sitting flat. Otherwise, when you go to set your stone, it's going to be kind of cockeyed and then it'll be difficult to get it to sit in there nicely. So, I have a few pieces of solder in here. I think I got plenty. So, we'll just go ahead and use those ones.
step for each of these will be, uh, before we start putting them into a ring, is file the bottom flat. So I'm going to go ahead and make bezels for all of the other three stones off camera so you don't have to watch me do that over and over again. And uh, then I'll turn it back on and we'll do the band and I'll show you how to put it all together. Okay, so got those bezels finished here, and this is actually kind of the configuration they're going to end up being in, like this. But um, I sketched out what we're going to make the band out of, two pieces of 14 gauge wire that are shaped like this, and then we're going to solder a bezel onto the end of each of these. And what they'll do is this will wrap around the ring mandle, and they'll cross over like that a little bit, and it makes for a kind of a pretty ring, so I think you like the way it comes out. So. Um, so what you need to do is you need to do go like about, I'm going to say maybe an eighth of an inch longer than these need to be to get the size that you want because they're going to go just a little bit past each other. So maybe more than an eighth, maybe like a eighth to a quarter and then let's see where it fits. Straighten these wires out. Pretty close. We need to decide how far down on the wire we're going to make this bend. We won't have enough to work with. Go about five eight three quarters somewhere in there. If I flip it around, since I made the mark across both of them, I can just extend the mark. That will be pretty symmetrical on either side. have to be beautiful or anything at this stage. So our next step is just going to be to solder these together. sure these are relatively symmetrical.
Okay, so I've lined those up pretty well, except for this one, apparently. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick solder here, 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 and here. so I don't lose them. I'm going to go ahead and pickle this uh, and then uh, before I bring it back I'll paint it up with the Dremel and get it ready to set the stones and then we can polish it and then we can see how it comes out. So. Okay, so I cleaned everything up with the Dremel a little bit, and I filed these part of the way down to the level they need to be, but I'll need to do a little fine tuning to set each of them. So that's what I'll be doing. Some of this I'll probably speed up. get faceted stones that will poke from behind. Make sure they're in there pretty securely. There's one of the oval ones. Points on pear shapes and marquees sometimes can be a little difficult to, to deal with in a bezel setting. One of the things you can do is you can taper the end down just a little bit because they tend to drop off towards the tip a little bit. And also, because we're going to be trying to force too much metal over the tip of that thing, uh, it's going to have a tendency to wrinkle. So if I thin it out just a little bit, it makes it just that much easier to compress into that space. seem secure so I'm going to go ahead and polish this and I usually polish it while it's in this shape it's easier to do and then after that we'll make it into its ring shape and I'll show you how to do that okay, so I got it polished up I washed it off a little bit get rid of some of the polishing compound now let's just put it around the ring manual here
This ends up producing kind of a blingy looking ring. And you can kind of configure those however you want them to be. But I always like the way they come out. There's your line ring. Okay, well that was the vine ring. Uh, I hope you found it useful and enjoyable. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Uh, I appreciate you watching. I love comments and suggestions. Um, I'm putting out uh, two to three videos per week, so uh, make sure to check back to see what's new if you haven't hit the bell. Uh, but thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Happy silversmithing. Take care.